Welcome to episode 10, the second episode of 2023. Today we're joined by a very special guest and a friend of CERT. If you work in property in Manchester, this man needs no introduction. His motto is love what you do, a phrase he epitomises in everything he does. Today's guest is Atul Banzel of Sheila Bird. Ooh. Wow. What However, an what an intro. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's off your website. Okay. Yeah, I must look at it sometime. Must look at it sometime. <laughs> However, before we get started with this episode, just a quick reminder to check out certproperty.co.uk, where you can find the latest UK property news, downloadable industry guides, and much more to help you on your investment journey. So, as we always do, a bit of a recap on the latest industry news. Yeah. What's been happening, Howard? Oh, lots. <laughs> I mean, I think some of the, the big headlines are in regards to the commercial market and offices relevant with our, our guests here, Absolutely. That there has been a 4% increase in letting activity across the uh, the big six regional markets. So 1.29 million square foot of offices letting quarter four, which is 17% above the 10-year average. So... Those that say the office is dead, far from it, and something we'll we'll talk to you a bit about later, Atul. And uh, yeah, I think within that, some of the trends that have been been seen in in the lettings that have happened in the commercial market is that there's been a flight to quality, where companies who have increased their space requirements or indeed those that have downsized are looking for higher quality offices, with a lot of features that probably pre-pandemic wouldn't even have, have crossed their mind. So, yeah, that's probably one of the uh, the big items of news since the last podcast. Other one, just that uh, increase in council tax in Greater Manchester, controversial. We've seen the mayor come out and advocate uh, freezing residential rents. So, yeah, just interesting to see what, what happens next with that as well. Obviously, cost of living, something we've talked about quite a lot before. Households coming under under pressure. So, yeah, interesting to see what happens next there. And what about Cert's latest news? Do we have any latest news? Our new edition. Oh, that latest news. <laughs> <laughs> You'll see from the pictures. <laughs> so, uh, it's beautiful, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Just want to get that in there. Yeah. People Wait for this that. picture. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, interesting you should say about the um, the commercial office stats, because that brings us nicely to today's guest, Atul. Almost like it was planned. <laughs> Almost like it. So <laughs> Sheila Bird said that the design places that inspire, empower and encourage people to interact and form thriving communities and that they challenge the norm. Very powerful statement. Yeah, and the word office doesn't appear once in that conversation. It hasn't. Yeah, I think that's really, really important. You know, you talk about how about how the market's increased in terms of lettings, etc. What will be interesting to understand is how that market increase has split down. And I think in about two years' time we'll get that statistics where actually it's not an office mm-hmm. they start calling it something else and I think that's the exciting part and um, people don't want to go to work anymore not how I define work when I was growing up they, they want to have experiences mm. and I think everything that people do today is about having an experience and going to a place of work that's been experience and it's not a five day job anymore it's a four day job or a three day job also when you want to be there so I think what will happen is you'll see a gradual decline of Offices inverted commas and a, and a gradual increase of something that nobody knows what it is. And I think those are the places that'll be really interesting. Maybe you could coin that phrase. <laughs> I, I, I was going to say, what what are we going to call this uh, this new yeah. space? We should coin a phrase for that because we've we've taken ownership of a few others like uh, community living, <laughs> suburban community living. So yeah, what are we going to call that space? I, I don't know, but I think it's where you fall in love, right, like with it. yourself and yeah. the people that you're with, with the business that you're working with. And it's it's basically it's a big loving, if that makes sense. Um, <laughs> Maybe that's what it is, a loving. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. What I'm saying is, you know, everybody wants something special, right? And they want to work for a company that's special. They want to work for a company that they feel valued, right? And no matter what your beliefs are, they want to be inclusive. A lot of companies have play lip service to that. Mm-hmm. And they're the ones that will eventually die, and they deserve to. And all the younger ones that have got no rules around what they do and embrace change, embrace diversity. And you realise that, that that whole way of supporting people's thoughts is a way they grow their business in a way that nobody else can are the ones that are going to succeed. 
they are going to they're going to empower the world and they're going to create something that's really really interesting that doesn't happen in office you know buildings aren't about offices the buildings about a sense of place and so we love that we love challenging the norm and sometimes you make mistakes doesn't matter you know but that's what will happen and the people grow that business it's not businesses that grow it's people so you get the right people who want to work for the right companies it just goes bang 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 you know or it goes outwards etc so so i think putting that in a few words is really difficult so is that your vision behind that yeah. ethos yeah i think i think i think our job as designers is not to pick carpet not <laughs> to pick a paint finish on the wall or anything like that in fact i don't think we've done a sample board for five or six years right our job is to connect people with spaces and thoughts and passions and desires that is a real sample ward of life we like joining dots and i think that's what people want people have gone past the pinterest world mm. everybody's got access to all of that information yeah. all the time so everybody's an immediate designer and we all are but that actually isn't the soul of anything mm. so we love to create soul you know meaning purpose and when you do that <clears throat> you've got to realize that it's not something that's fixed in a moment of time I've said this to you before, Monday mornings, nobody wants to be at work, so nobody comes to work anymore. <laughs> they come on Tuesdays, right? And then Friday, they're really happy because they're going home. So buildings have to be, do that. They have to have a personality that supports people's emotions. That's what I believe in. So what's your creative process when you start on a new scheme? Ooh, wow. <clears throat> we have this constant debate in the office. I think what we do is uh, we're quite lucky in the sense that we get asked to do projects, so we're in that position where we're not bidding for work. Mm. And that's and we can do that because we're we're passionately small. Right? So we can afford to pick and choose what we get involved in. So when we get asked to do a project, we've already been sold to that organization. So it's really easy for us to say to the client that we think what you're asking to do is wrong, if it is, or you need to reevaluate it. They made the decision to come to talk to us already. So as far as it's really, really easy to talk to people in an open way. So if we get a brief from somebody, we take Hilton House, mm. okay? Good example, Al. we got asked to work with you mm -hmm. and our job was to create a passion and soul around this building. Mm -hmm. And during the process of all that conversation, we did all that, working with an architect and you guys. And sometimes we had to push more than perhaps we should have done, but they were right. Sometimes they were wrong, but sometimes mistakes were important. And we got to the point about activating the building. And that's when I joined the dots and said, look, you need to put something in the ground floor and we introduce you to Feel Good Club. Mm -hmm. And that introduction developed into a beautiful partnership. And now it acts as the, as the, as the thing that connects the building to the street. Mm -hmm. So that's what I mean about joining dots. Mm -hmm. so, so those are the sort of things that we like to do. Now, that's important in terms of the culture and the, or the building. So the building is defined by the people within it, always. Mm -hmm. The culture of that building is defined by, I want to be in that building because so-and-so is in that building. And the entry point to the building is always how it talks to the public as you walk past it. You always mm -hmm. feel good club. Oh, it's in Hilton House. You know, so, so that relationship exists in a real way. And all you're doing all the time is talking to people yeah. to walk past outside the building. You know, and nobody walks outside you know, an office block in town and says, isn't that wonderful? They don't. You know, nobody talks mm. about the coffee shop in, in a department store. They don't. Yeah. So it's just, it's just, those buildings just provide a service. I think what you guys are doing and it's happening in, in, in the place that you live as well, you're providing something that's much more powerful than that. And those are the businesses that will succeed. It's a, it's a bit of magic, but actually it's really simple. You just don't think about yourself, think about the people how they want to use it. And it doesn't cost much to do, it just needs a bit of conviction and belief. Mm. You know? And eventually what happens is the value of that property goes up and up and up and up. And it becomes something that stands as a beacon in that place and that other things happen around it. As designers, I think that's our responsibility. It's interesting because you say there, connect the dots. And you just said, as a designer, that's your responsibility. And I, I've never really looked at, at you and, and Sheila Bird as, <clears> a, as, a, as an entity, as designers, because you don't just do that. You are about connecting the other elements yeah. that, that make a building work, whether it be, you know, putting us together with someone who can help achieve that, whether it's activation through like a, a Duke and Par, you know, the idea of the wallpaper and getting some students to create a wallpaper. It's, it's things like that that aren't necessarily obvious designer, no. as you would typically sort of pigeonhole it, uh, responsibilities 
that for me, I, I don't look at that you as purely a designer. You're so much more. You're you're a facilitator to yeah. to and, making that building and come our, alive. And we can only do that if we work with people like you guys. You give us the freedom to do that. Mm -hmm. So it's a partnership. And you know, and when we're commissioning that wallpaper, we don't dictate what happens. Mm. We let another creative person take the lead. Mm -hmm. You know, and you know, we said to you guys, don't do anything to that wall. You guys got it. Mm -hmm. You know, eventually you thought, wow, I get what you mean. And as soon as other places start to get beautiful, the old history became beautiful in its own right. Mm -hmm. As soon as that takes over, the confidence about what you do to a space takes over. Mm -hmm. And that building is let amazingly to the most amazing company. Mm -hmm. And it's a space bigger than what they wanted, I think. Yep. And they fell in love with it. Yep. Why? Because it's still got its soul. Yeah. yeah, and it's still got that thing that makes it Liverpool, mm. you know. And the people that moved into it are the people the building was targeted for. Mm. Mm. So we specifically if you remember sitting down discussing who is the customer, mm. what personality are we aiming this building to, and we decided that's what it was. And everything we did from day one, mm. not halfway through, the naming, the website, the positioning of the product was all done in a way to talk to a certain community. And God, did we get it right? <laughs> Together, we got it perfectly right. Mm. Mm. You know. And you should all be really proud of it. I'm proud of Duke and Park. We are. Yeah. Very proud. So what, what you've got an interesting backstory as well to kind of lead up to yeah. where you are today. So, yeah, interested for you to tell us a bit more about that. If The, the bits that you can tell. <laughs> <laughs> What's the backstory? You mean how we started off? or I mean, yours, your journey personally, and, and, and Sheila Bird. Um, okay, so people ask me why we call Sheila Bird. Let's kick off with that one, mm. okay? I left university in Manchester... MA went to work for a joinery shop in Drawsden, hated it, despised it, but it helped me pay off my overdraft, okay? <laughs> and within six months, managed to convert that small little joinery shop into something that was much bigger, because at that time in time in the moment of Manchester, and I'm 63 now, so I'm, that's why I was 22 a long time ago, designing spaces and building spaces was not normal. It did not happen. So this little small company went from zero to but this really, really quickly. And in that building, I met somebody, the sales director. <clears throat> and the first day he, I walked into the building, first day he walked in the building, I was working the corner. He said to me, hi, I'm so-and-so, you're our new designer. I said, no, no, I'm your only designer. I said, nice to meet you. I'm a member of the National Front. That's how we met, <laughs> right? So me and him fell in love with each other. And he was a lot older than me. He was a mason and I became a mason. So I was actually the first black mason in the north of England. Okay, right. did it to, did it because he wanted me to do it. So I'll hold that. I don't hold that record anymore, but I was really pleased about it. I, I, I resigned later on because I didn't really believe in anything it stood for, but it's him. Gosh. But we left and we started off a business. And my partner loved women, loved women with a passion from his <laughs> second or third wife, right? <laughs> and this woman came to sell us wallpaper and she was absolutely beautiful. And my partner fell in love with her. I'm not going to mention too many names. Okay. Was it <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so, so cut a long story short, she did not believe him, and he said, I'll prove to you that I've fallen in love with you, and he said, prove it, and he said, I'll tell you what, me and Ashley are trying to decide what we call our business, and why don't I call it Sheila Bird? Now, I'm in the room with him, and he, and he said, that okay, the athlete's fine by me, she said, well, prove it to me, incorporate the business, show me the paperwork, and we'll go out for dinner, and so we did, we went out for dinner, and they were married later in life. I did not know this. And that is did why <laughs> that is why we called Sheila Bird. And he was faithful to her and they got married. And they both passed away over ten years ago. By the time they passed away, the business all came to me because they were like my second parents. And Jeff said to me that the whole world is gonna collapse. This is when the last big recession happened. He said, sell everything we've got. You know, we're up to ninety, hundred and twenty people we employed. We were a design and build company then. Mm. Sell everything you've got get out of the market and just do something else. And so Jeff's never wrong, right? And he's, he's the sort of person that would decide when he, when, he, when he died. So we sold everything after he died and cleared off all the debts, et cetera, et cetera. And I went from 90 odd people to two people. And that was the birth of Sheila Bird as it stood. Kept the name forever because it's part of my soul. And then I realized that then that design is actually all I really cared about. And people actually wanted to use us, not because we built as well, but because we were designing good design. And so business really started off nurturing from that point. And I've been passionate about keeping it small because I didn't want to get to the position where I was doing things I didn't enjoy because that's where I was with that other business. Mm -hmm. So now everything we do is about what we enjoy doing. And I've discovered that if you keep yourself small and be proud of it, you don't have to chase the work to pay the bills. 
So all the stuff that we don't want to do, and actually it equates to stuff that we're really bad at, right? Because you don't care about it, like all the detailing, we give other people to do. So we support a network of people who provide that service. And that's our way of helping our design community. So, you know, when we're really busy, we give work to other designers who, some of them now compete with us, which I'm really proud of. We help those businesses to grow to where they are. So that's how we are and that's how we work and that's how we live. That gives us the ability to build, bring in beautiful talent, young people who are really creative, who never get a chance to work on amazing stuff like the artist that we brought into Liverpool. Mm. You know, she's done more work for us, you know, and that way you build that community and you get special work from special people. And that's how we are now still. There's six of us, including me, and that's it. And it won't get any bigger than that, but we do a lot more. We punch above our weight in terms of things that we do, I think. And I'm really proud of that. What a story. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the obvious next thing to ask is about some, some of the projects you're working on or, or have worked on. <clears throat> you know, a standout project that, you know, I, I don't know. <laughs> well, no, <laughs> no, not, you, not one of ours. You don't ours. have to say Not that. one no, of no, ours. No, no. But, like, what, one project that, that stands out, and I for think, what, whatever I, reason. I, no, I, th- I think they all stand out, because mm. they all achieve something in their own right. So, you know, you talk about, we've done a beautiful small job for a company called Culture Shift. Mm. Yeah, tiny little thing. But it's absolutely gorgeous. But to them, it's beautiful. And so for us, it's beautiful. It doesn't matter which project we do, they're all brilliant because we don't do anything that's rubbish. Mm. Right? And they all really mean a lot to the people that we've done. I think if you talk about the buildings that have had the biggest effect, um, you know, in terms of place, etc., you can pass stands above it. You know, it stands out because it's it's a building that was neglected, abused, molested, if I can say, Mm. over its years. And it's lost everything it used to have and the purpose it was built. I feel really intensely proud you can see all that and you guys should do as well T- tell me what you did in the creative process there when you went in <laughs> <laughs> well, are you just going to try to nick his ideas his process no, is that no, why no. you keep asking so, this so, 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 undress so, 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 <laughs> the building undress yeah. the beast yeah, yeah. But, no, no seriously I, I always this goes I mean I might tell you the story I don't know it might, might be not right thing to say but I always I always think people always ask me you know when this is when I was a lot younger when I was perhaps more inappropriate People do say to me, what do you do? Well, I, I'm a pimp, I sell sex. That's what I say. <laughs> right? And I'll tell you why I use that word, because it's a really powerful word that means so much to a lot of people, but it's emotion. And everybody has a thing about what that word means, but normally, nine times out of ten, it's a wonderful feeling. It's an uplifting feeling. So I use that word because I think that's what we do do, right? And when I walked into Duke and Par, I just wanted to undress it, <laughs> right? It had all these clothes on that were totally inappropriate, and it needed to live in a nudist colony. Right. So, so, but if we say that to a client, I think you're bonkers. Not right? us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you don't use that language. But in my brain, I'm saying, what's underneath that? What's underneath that? Mm. You know, and, and, and how can we take that away? And then once you do all that, people are horrified. Normally, you guys weren't, which is brilliant. Right? They're horrified. I, I don't look at his naked body. You know, you feel quite ashamed, embarrassed. Yeah. Yeah. But, but sex is like you know when you you know sex is about courting. Right, you're taking somebody out, you take them out for dinner, you take them out for pictures, and, and eventually you take them home and you slowly undress them. And sometimes the chase is actually more interesting than the final act. Well, tell me about yeah? it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but what I'm saying is interiors, buildings like that are the same. The chase, the courting, you know, is really interesting, you know. But I always like to have a happy ending, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I think Duke Park is a happy ending. No, but it is, isn't it? It is. It is a happy you ending. Know, you know, I'm just using language that people can relate to. Yeah. Yeah. Because buildings are not about buildings, they're about passion and belief. Yeah. And, it's, and wasn't that process fun? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was, it was immense was. fun. Mm-hmm. You know, and for the people who move in, it's even more fun. Yeah. I just hope they don't wreck it yeah. when they do yeah. what they do to it. And they just respect what's there. Yeah, you know. there may be carpet tiles involved. Oh. <laughs> I've heard on the streets. Have you? They need to make sure they're recyclable and they're, and they're, and they're, and they're done in the appropriate way. Indeed. So Indeed. They protect the planet. <laughs> you know. I feel like this next question, you're going to say nothing's a challenge. It's just a new opportunity. However, Go on. what has been the most challenging project or site that you've worked on i don't I, I feel from this conversation you're going to tell me you don't find anything a challenge no no i know I, no two things i think there is life is full of challenges and i i actually bat them off and say they're opportunities right that's always been my my motto right there's nothing that can't be sold and if and but i think the most challenging projects i've ever done right and i'm not going to name names it's not fair 
we were asked to go in and see somebody who had a call centre and said, my staff are depressed. I don't understand why and I need you to come in and help me. And he thinks and he thought we needed to do something that was trendy because that's what he thought interior design was about. Mm -hmm. I went in there and it was 98% full of women dealing with medical challenges that women have. So the topic mm -hmm. that they're dealing with was difficult. Mm -hmm. And it was, a, it was a lonely place and it felt sad. And he said, what do I do? He was the only male employee and he owned the business. Okay. And I knew he wanted something that would enliven everybody. And he thought it was a moment of creative genius, etc. And I felt out, out of place. I didn't know what to do. I had no idea how to deal with that problem. So I brought somebody in who's a really good friend of mine to help me solve that problem. I'm a lady that's really in tune to how ladies think, etc. And we And she discovered that we're lonely. That was their problem. None of them talked to each other, which actually was very, very typical of that age group in this world that we live in at the moment, where people live in flats, they don't make friends easily, and their relationships are built about sli sliding left and sliding right. They don't talk to people in the way that I was brought up to talk to people. I used to date by going into a bar. It doesn't happen so often now. And both Howard and Paul nodding their heads there. Yeah. Mm. So, so what I'm saying is, so, 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 so she said, all we need to do is make them talk, right, to each other without tech. So my challenge was how do I tell that client that needs to solve this problem? He would not accept that as a solution. So I came up with this idea with my friend's help to build a pink table. So I said, what you need is a pink table. Well, what's that? It's a really long table, about six meters long. It's got loads of pink chairs. You're going to put it outside your shitty kitchen, right? What's that going to do? He says, well, we're going to put a sign on saying no tech. <laughs> Trust me. It's going to cost a fortune. No, no, it's all reclaimed stuff, etc." He only said yes because it was a pink table, <laughs> right? And put there within a month, the business has changed because people sat down there and they talked to each other. They got to know who Mary was, who, who Joan was, and, and Abby was. And all of a sudden, they started to have a conversation with them because there's a space for them to do it. There's nothing to do with a pink table. But it would never got approved if I said, let's just put a table for them to talk in. <laughs> so that was the hardest thing I've ever done. With the simplest solution. Yeah. And I didn't, <laughs> and I didn't, and I didn't come up with the answer. Mm. Right. And sometimes it's about asking somebody who's better than you and not being afraid of doing that. Yeah, And I think that's really, really important. We don't know everything. Clients think we do, but we know somebody who does, and I think mm. that's the key. Mm. It's, it's impressive to know those moments when you don't know the answer yourself as well. Mm. Like that, as a, you, you, could have, you could have winged it. You could have come up with some solutions, and if it didn't work, there's actually no repercussions on you if it doesn't work from, from a design point of no, view. No, but you only have one reputation, don't you? Of course. Yeah. It's really important to us. Of course. You know, and it was a low-cost solution. Never paid our bill, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but I won't go into that. <laughs> he said, I'm not paying you for that. That's a bloody big table. It worked. <laughs> you don't get it right all the time. <laughs> you know, but I don't mind that. You know, he'll, he'll, he'll be the person that goes to his grave you know, knowing he's done something wrong. But a lot of people in that business will be really happy. Yeah. And just to qualify, we've got a pink table, but it's not us. <laughs> <laughs> no, <yeah. laughs> hmm. So, <clears throat> most fun project? Uh, the most fun project? I think, it's, I think it's got to be the project we did for Social Chain mm. when they were growing in Manchester, purely because they were doing things that were totally disruptive mm. in the market and they had so many young people following them. Um, and Steve was totally disrupting everything they, that, that stood there. And he questioned everything and he was growing a business in a way that was exponential and it was changing in the way it did things. And the challenge was to how do you stay relevant to a, to a, to a section of the community that I didn't even understand. Mm. So learning about what people need and what they, what they do and Steve's desire to do things in a different way was really, really challenging, but so much fun. And, you know, we did, we've done loads of work for him since and we're currently working with him in something on London, which will hit the airwaves hopefully shortly. But that was challenging, not because it was hard, it's because it was interesting. You know, we like to be tested, you know, to do things that we've never done before. And I think that's 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 what I live for. Same. Know? That's why we get on, I think. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> so so what's next for you, Guel? That's obviously next. But what's a dream that you'd like to work on? Or an objective or a, a oh, goal? Oh, God. Yeah. Um, my dream is not to wake up in the morning and dread going to work. I managed to do that for 63 years. 
Yeah. So my dream is to carry on doing that. I'm living the dream. And I mean, what did um, somebody say? Um, Vivian Westwood. Yeah. I, I love that lady because mm. she lived her life in a way that most people would envy. You know, she fell in love with somebody two thirds of her age, yeah. literally. And she said something when she was, you know, somebody interviewed her and um, said, when are you going to retire? And I remember she just recently died. This was the interview was done about three years ago. I think she was 60 something then. And she said to this young guy, he said, oh, okay, let me get this right. When will I retire? So you retire when you want to do what you do, get up when you want, choose what you wear, decide what time you go into work, where you go on holiday. In other words, be your own boss. And say, yeah, well, why the fuck do I want to retire? <laughs> yeah, you live that life and that's what I want to carry on doing. Mm -hmm. And you can do that by working with young people. I don't need face cream. I, I live off youth. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, they keep you young because they question, question things all the time. You know, they just think, well, well why do we need to do that? You know, nobody puts telephone systems anymore in. Mm -hmm. It doesn't happen. Tell us about your working day because I think you are the only person in Manchester who is awake before me and Howard. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, when I'm... I go on my, when I put my phone on in the morning, we both get up really early, but when I put my phone on in the morning, Atul's been up two hours, he's painted something. Yeah. It's on the socials yeah. and you, he's you, off. Might, you might get an email from me like <laughs> 10 past five, but when I wake up and see one from you at like 4.20. Yeah. My, my, I, I hate being asleep. I love being asleep, but I feel I'm missing out. <laughs> I wake up most days, apart from Sunday when I have a lie-in, um, 2.30. Wow. About. So I get up and I start drawing. And do you feel you're at your most creative then? I'm left alone at a time. Mm. And I've got my own brain and my body working away. Not, and I love the mornings. So I, I sometimes I, I, I shave and shower straight away and go straight into work in the studio for 3.30, 4 o'clock. I do my serious emails that time because... My iPad, I don't have an office at home. I'm not allowed to have one, I don't want one. <laughs> Got an iPad, I want to look at bigger stuff, I wait till I get into the office, so they're the more serious emails about big drawings I'm looking at. I'm glad the ones after around 4 a.m. are the serious ones, <laughs> so I'm getting serious <laughs> emails from you. That's good today. So, no, I like the mornings, 2.30 is when my brain kicks in, and I work at home, I have fun really, do my drawings and do my thinking about projects and what's coming up, get in the office at 4.30, do my other stuff I have to do, and then I'm done by 8.30. I've got all my stuff that I need to. And then from 8.30 onwards, it's about seeing what's happening in the studio, working with the team who are much better than me, uh, much more organised by me. They're much more... In fact, the reason why I don't go in early is I'm actually locked out of all my systems. I can't go onto AutoCAD because I mess it up. <laughs> I don't go onto Word documents or Excel spreadsheets. I'm locked out because I just mess with them. And I don't know what I'm doing because I'm dyslexic, so I don't understand directions or instructions. So I'm just barred. Which is great. Well, I was really upset when it happened because nobody told me, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and when I found out, I said, well, yeah, okay. And it's actually freedom. I don't worry about that. You don't need to live. You know, just ask us. You don't need to look at it, you know? So I just live in my own lovely world where I just draw and I talk and I imagine things. It's lovely. I mean, better not tell <laughs> Stephen and Grant and Jake how to bar me because I'll be barred from things, the appraisals Honestly, it's, that I it's mess liberating. up. liberating. I don't think you could ever be barred. Yeah, no. but, you know, <laughs> I can't do what I do without an amazing team that I have. Yeah. You know, they're all right, brilliant right. at doing certain things and, and every single piece of work everybody's involved in, but not always me. Right, that's important. Mm -hmm. you know, and there's work that's going on now that I'm not involved in day to day, but I don't need to because they're all brilliant. You know, and they think thin, and, and we have a, I think we've got an amazing ability to help people think in a really free way. When you do that, amazing results come out of it, you know, and, and I'm sitting there watching a presentation from Georgia or from Liber or from John thinking, wow, this is amazing, you know, and I've not been involved in it, but it doesn't matter because what they produce is absolutely brilliant. Why? Because they've got the freedom. There's no mistakes in our business. You know, nobody can make a mistake. You know, that's really, really important. Everybody's free to do what they think they're best at. If it's wrong, it's wrong. Client says, you know, where's our presentation? No, we haven't finished it yet. You just want to make it special. Oh, okay. Because they've asked us to help and they accept it. Mm. They think we're a bit quirky, but all we're doing is trying to do the best. You know, and I don't think over the th ooh, 30 years, there's only one time, I'll tell you this story, <laughs> as, um, we have really simple payment terms, right? You know, we, when we did work with you, mm. when we did work for you, all we'd always do was, I, I remember meeting Stephen when we were doing Hilton House and he said, well, I really would like you to do Hilton House. 
And he said, right, okay, right, let's do it. Let's, let's do it. Should we drop a contract? I said, great. So I drew a picture <laughs> of Little Mouse in my pad and he signed it. That was our contract. We never had anything else than that. Yeah, you know that? Yeah, I know. Right? And so we haven't got a long term, we haven't got loads and loads of pages. We have a really simple contract. But in it, it says, if you don't like what we've done, we'll, you, we'll, you don't have to pay us. And pay us within 14 days. And that simple thing, because it's, the plain English is what I like. And um, we did some work for somebody who owned a building that is actually now the Easy Hotel. Oh, yeah. just around the corner hmm. and we designed this scheme for him we got to stage two of our and it, i think he spent about 15 16 grand with us it was quite a few years ago and he said to me i'm not going to carry on and i said oh, why is that because i don't think you've got it right right i think what you've done is wrong and i've realized now that it's not the right thing so why don't you tell me before well i didn't want to upset you but i don't want to carry on i want to know why i said okay fine he said look, look i'll just no. I said, no no he says send me an invoice and i'll repay your fees because i should have known he said you're joking said, but i did he sent me an invoice to repay his fees in full. He was gobsmacked. Three months later, I went to see somebody who I think helped us transform our business. That was Nissan Passy of Misguided. Yeah, mm. and he was talking to designers about helping him with his new home. And I went into his office, and that guy was there, sat at his table with him. And he said to, he said, oh, I have to use him. Do you know each other? Yes, use him. Brilliant. <laughs> I'm a firm believer that things happen for a reason. So I'm not saying I wouldn't have got that job. But his commentary certainly helped. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Nasta did a bad job for him. Isn't that yeah. funny? <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's integrity, isn't it? And yeah, uh, yeah. like you said before, you've got one reputation yeah. out there. Yeah. And just having integrity and, you know, making sure that you're doing your best on every job. Yeah, correct. You can't, you can't get it right all the time. No. None of us do. No. Um, and it's about, yeah standing there and, and, and being counted when you don't get it right yeah. and yeah i mean your, your approach there speaks to why you you know been so successful for so long i think i think i think i'd rather say happy for so long yeah you know success well, happiness is, is a success yeah i think it? so yeah people yeah. tend to look at success in terms of money mm. you know whether you you know built this ivory tower and stuff and I, and I don't think i'm like that or the people that work with us are like that we all share the same values i think you guys are like that as well mm -hmm because you have this passion. And you know, a lot of, I work for a lot of clients, yeah, and not a lot of property developers are like, not, it's like CERT, you know, and sometimes you forget like that. Oh, no, no. Over. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but it's true, it is true, it is true. A lot of people um, are looking at spreadsheets all the time. Mm. There's no latitude for anything. I remember when we first talked together, I said, can we have a fun fund? And you said, yeah, okay, what's that? I said, it's fun. <laughs> and you said, yeah, okay. Yeah. We spent it, and more unfortunately, yeah. we yeah. Yeah. Well, well, we've definitely, we kept, we've we definitely kept that on. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh, well, I think we could talk for hours and hours. Absolutely. Because, as ever, it's always so interesting and inspirational to speak to you. And I think every time we meet, we take something away and to apply to our own business and yeah, you know I, yeah exactly i think paul used the right word there i, I think you're an inspiration at all for, for me since i've met you certainly and you know every time I speak to you again as paul says you feel like you, you're learning something from someone who's just got such a well-balanced view of passion uh, and passion yeah. of, of how things should work they don't always work yeah. and uh yeah it's it's yeah. been a pleasure uh, no, been, uh, think, talking to you and, and for you to to share your experience i think if we're doing what we're doing when we're the same age as you and as happy as you then we've led we've a very successful right. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. time yeah, definitely definitely for, for sure well, thanks for listening and, no thank and, you and, and give thank us the opportunity you. to work with you and make some amazing projects likewise when's the next one <laughs> i thought this was the news you were asking me about earlier <laughs> i've got a drawing i'll do and you can sign it. Yeah, so, uh, you need to sign this one. Yeah, yeah. okay, okay. <laughs> so like let me do my plug. Yeah. You can help me with this. Thanks for tuning in today to the No Bullshit Property Podcast. If you like this episode, let us know on Instagram. Our handle is at cert underscore property. And let us know what you'd like to see more of. You can find the latest UK property news, downloadable industry guides, and much more to help you on your investment journey at certproperty.co.uk. And get subscribed to us. Are you subscribed to us? I am, yes. Good. You like pretty much <laughs> all of our, our pictures, so thank you for that. <laughs> Thanks, no, thank, thank you, you very much. No. Thank you. Cool. Cheers, Athol. <laughs>